Hello and welcome to another episode of the Auto Trader Podcast, SA's number one most streamed podcast. My name is Wandila Sishi, and as always, joined by George Mini. Hi, George. Hey, Wandi, how's it going? It feels like it's been a minute. It feels like it's been a minute since I've, I've sat across you. It has spoken. been because we just did a dealer masterclass, right? We did, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, you did so well on that stage. I was First impressed. time emceeing. Mm-hmm. Uh, First time. The ones and twos, I was kind of, I felt like a little bit of a DJ, uh, kind of conducting the room. So it was fun. I enjoyed it. No, it, was a, it was really good, uh, good turnout and again, good job. So uh, no, very, very good. Yeah, so it has been a minute. Yeah. Um, there's another race this weekend. I mean, at the time know. of the recording, but yeah. at the time this kind of goes live, the race would have been done. Yeah, um, which is in Spain. Spain. Um, kind of an interesting season so far. I don't know how you feel about Charles still in Ferrari. What is your thoughts thus far? The clear. Mm. Mm. Um, I, I, I think I think he's the better driver out of the two. Really? Like, yeah. Um, he's kind of disappoints me. I won't lie. Why? Um, I think he's just not as aggressive as Max, and that's going to be his downfall. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, is he the better driver versus Max? I think, mm. I think Max is the bigger risk taker. Yeah, Leclerc needs a fast car. Max doesn't necessarily need a fast car exactly. in order to, to win. To to win. Yeah, he's got um, bigger balls, in my opinion. Yes, and I, that's spot kind on. of the biggest yeah. difference between the two drivers. <clears throat> but but in terms of I Ferrari, I think Leclerc is the better driver. Oh, okay. Yeah. Between uh, Charles and, Char- and, and Carlos. And Carlos, yeah. Science, yeah. Is, science is a little bit inconsistent. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's definitely true. But let's see what happens. I think Mercedes might just be coming back. Um, they've kind of, they're definitely the third best car there. Um, I still think they made a mistake losing Bottas. I, I disagree with that, yeah. Why? Why do you? Why do you think that? I just I just look at how Bottas is is is, is performing in Alpha. Okay. And uh, versus his teammate. Yeah. And yeah, he's yeah. doing so much better. He's almost up there with the Mercedes. Well, Bottas is a great <coughs> driver. I think no one should. No one's ever disputed that he was not a fantastic driver. Mm. Um, but he's better than than George. George is doing better than Lewis right now. So, you know. Is he better than George Russell? He's got more experience. Yeah. Um, for sure. Sure. Uh, uh, like my opinion on uh, um, on Hamilton. Yeah. I mean, all the jokes aside, my opinion <laughs> on Hamilton is is he he's his own worst enemy when he's not winning. For sure. For sure. It's definitely he, he got kind into of, his head. It gets to his head. Yeah. I think I think it messes with his head. Yeah. And uh, it's almost like when he's winning, he can exponentially yeah. kind of take it ahead. Yeah. But when he's not winning, yeah. it's kind of like he's a. He, it's almost like that exponential decline. It's been a, it's been a long time since I've seen him not at you know at the top of of his game, and I think that's the big difference with Max and Charles right now. Is Max doesn't need to be winning; he wants to win. Mm. Period. Mm. He doesn't care what the situation is; he's going to do whatever it takes to win, um, and it's never going to get to his head. Isn't there a rumor that uh, Red Bull's going to become Porsche? Or? Yeah, there's a little bit of of whispers because yeah. Porsche and Porsche and VW. Uh, coming well, into F1, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, VW owns Porsche. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's two separate um, sort of OEMs, yeah. Well, uh, it's two separate OEMs. I mean, VW owns Porsche and yeah. probably a Porsche engine, you know, VW branding. Who do, who knows what what they're yeah. going to do? But uh, uh, Lots of whispers around. <clears throat> I like a Formula One race with manufacturers. Me too. Because you know, so like, if you, are, I mean, I love Red Bull, the brand and the and the yeah. um, and the but team. It's, it's strange, but it's 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 not a car. Yeah, Red Bull's not a car. Yeah, it's like yeah. if Rolex had a had an F one. Yes, it would be bizarre. It's like you know, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? You're trying to show us you can do it your time. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> sell me your car first, Red Bull, and then I'll be yes. I'll be a fan. Yeah, but yeah, what they've done as a business is is amazing. No, absolutely. But we're not Anyways, here to talk yeah. about F one. We're here to talk about. <laughs> we're going to keep what? on going. <laughs> so today's episode we're going to be talking about is the quality of cars getting worse. So quality versus price. Um, before we even get into it, do you think, like what's what's the highest on your list in terms of um, the most important things when purchasing a vehicle? Quality, price, performance, safety, let's throw it all in there. Yeah, I mean, I think all of the above, but what I've figured out about myself over over my, um, you know, um, 48 years on the planet. Yeah. You know, more. 48 more years? Oh. Wow. <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Am I double your age? Um, not quite. It's not yet. Less, yeah. less. Anyway, so uh, uh, what I figured out over my lifetime is um, is that I like fast cars. Okay. I thought I didn't. I, at one point, I owned a Fortuna. Yeah, yeah. And I loved my Fortuna. Yeah. But it wasn't fast enough. 
Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and I figured out that I love V8s for the sound. Yeah. Okay. So it's strange coming out of my mouth, but, yeah. but I love V8s for that roar. V6s and V10s, not so much, yeah. but definitely V8s. Um, so that's important to me. Now that I've driven an EV, yeah. okay, I'm loving the silence. I'm like, I've, I've, I've left, the, I left the roar behind because- but you get that. But you get the speed. Yeah. And I think, I think that for me has, is, is, is an important factor, is the, is the available power yeah. when you need it. I recently basically was in an e-tron RS mm. and I got launched in it. <clears throat> and let me say that that was the most different experience I've ever had in a vehicle, ever. Everything about it was different. It your, felt bra like your brain takes a second to catch up. Everything was, it was just a whole new experience. Yeah. It's not the, I think a lot of people uh, take EVs and, and, and ICE vehicles and think it's gonna be it's not a comparison. The same thing and no. you know, the one's just silence. It's a completely different experience. Completely different. So I can I can understand why a lot of people <clears throat> love um, the, the performance of, of an EV and, and can make the switch. Yeah. I get it now. So, well, I, so I believe you. I mean, so, so the other things that are important to me yeah. are, um, uh, are, are, are definitely um, ride comfort. So what I mean by ride comfort is the car needs to feel solid on the road. Um, yeah. Now, not just because I'm, you know, into EVs, but but an EV just naturally sits on the road better because yeah. of the low center of gravity mm. and it's a heavy vehicle. Mm. It's, you know, I mean, I think the I-Pace is 2.1, 2.2 tons. Yeah. Um, so, so, so that, and then, and then that creates this perception of quality when the vehicle feels solid. It doesn't it's feel almost like tinny. It's almost sitting like a, um, it's like a, a tank. solid stance. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. like a, it's like a tank on the road, but it's mm. still got the power. Yeah. Um, uh, what's not important to me are infotainment systems. Okay. Um, Bluetooth's important because I do a lot of calls in the car. Of course. Um, but I, I very, very rarely, this would be surprising to you, very rarely use Apple CarPlay in my car. Yeah. Very rarely. What do you use? Just the native system or? Bluetooth. Okay. Bluetooth to connect yeah. to the car's native system. Okay. Um, very rarely do I use Apple CarPlay because the, the iPace particularly has very good maps. Yeah. Um, so I don't need Google Maps. So I, I, I know in South Africa, a lot of co like <coughs> car shoppers, that's a very important sort of selling point for a lot of the OEMs is having this great entertainment system. It, it, it sounds system different to entertainment system. No, I mean like a, yeah. a whole package where it yeah. has, you know, oh, the no, navigation and, and the yada. And to me, that's not important. I'd rather have a better, like, I need, I guess you, you need good sound quality. when it when it when it plays a song like yeah. so you know when yeah. when you yeah. play the music you need good sound quality okay but good sound quality doesn't mean you need bells and whistles in the infotainment system for sure for sure I mean how often do you use everything that that's in these these vehicles now there's so many added things that I just oh, you set it up and you leave it yeah you know so anyways there was a study in the UK um, where they took a thousand two hundred different motorists. And they took part to kind of rank what are the most important things. So in the UK, the most important, um, or the, the, the most important selling points is the reputation for quality. Reputation for quality, mm. assuming that that as, means as, perceived exactly. quality, right? Exactly that. So if the car has a, a, a reputation or perception from people that it's you know a, a, of a better quality in terms of the material and the build quality, then that's number one. Followed by styling, um, and then positive ownership experience as third, and then good value for money. How do you measure positive ownership experience? Is that just from other consumers? I would, I would assume that's like a secondhand, other secondhand thing, or like you're saying, other consumers saying that it's that it's good. That it's good. Yeah. But it it, it gave me it made me ask myself, do you think in South Africa that that's the same top four? Hmm. That's an interesting question because I think I think in South Africa we are more price sensitive, for sure. Um, I think I think our our currency mm. uh, and our you know our currency and what it can buy mm. um, is is not as strong as uh, as European currencies or the pound or the dollar. Yeah. Um, and and we've got a lot more add-ons to a vehicle, especially the imported ones, in terms of you know. Pushes its price up, yeah. So, so now Chinese brands have come into the market, and historically, Chinese brands were see, perceived to be low quality. Chinese anything was perceived to be low quality. Yeah. Look at how the Jolians fly. 
I have a different opinion to that. I think there is a level of South Africans, one, being super sensitive to price, but also still wanting to look like they're in a perceived good quality, shiny, sparkly. You talk like that. You, talk, you, you know, that is, uh, I think that's true because, I mean, you, you, you drive into a townhouse complex, for instance, right? Yeah. Townhouses, uh, anywhere from six, seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand rand for a townhouse. Uh, to you know, sometimes 1.2, 1.5 million rand on average yeah. for a uh, uh, for a townhouse bedroom, unit, yeah. right? And you see people driving six, seven, eight hundred thousand rand cars. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so now you ask yourself the question: Well, uh, you live where in the priorities. Like, yeah. Where's the priority? Priority is in the car because yeah. you're living in a one million rand townhouse, but you're driving a seven hundred thousand rand car. Yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, and 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 from a monthly point of view, a townhouse is cheaper, yeah, because you get a twenty, thirty year bond. Plus, the value um, in terms of the long term value is is, is better. Is a better yeah. Yes. Whereas the car, you got to pay off in 70, 72 months. Somebody most. told me you can never drive your house, and I, you know, you can it's always true. sleep in your car. You can't you can sleep in your car. You can't drive, you can't drive your house. So I, I you know. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. But I, um, I mean, saying. yeah. So, so I, I think it speaks to that that kind of perception that you mm. you say South Africans are. Uh, is that though keeping up with the Joneses? Are we so, buying yes. stuff yes. to impress people that we don't even like? I think there's been a swing. It used to be, let's all get the German brands and have this perceived quality or higher affluence. But now we have cars that look like the German brands, mm. and you can still be price sensitive. Yeah. which I think is a, a better thing to do. So it's all about the look. It's all about the look, but now let me also be financially S responsible. Responsible about yeah. it, yeah. And I think that's where the, the South African market is swinging to. And I think the the Chinese um, brands the, the brands have, have really identified that um, the need to still have uh, something that looks nice yeah. and something that you want to be inside and have people look at you and be like, wow, that's, that's a really nice car. Mm -hmm. um, but still not break the bank. But is the quality better of those vehicles? I, you know what, I, you have to drive I've, 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 I've had the Haval <clears throat> for, um, you know, one, two, three days. The, specifically the Jolian? Not the Jolian, no. Okay. It was the... Okay. H, H6. H6, I think it yeah. was, yeah. And a really nice car. Yeah. Okay. It, it, you, 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 you can feel its price point um, mm. on things like the freeway. It's uh, less insulated. Now, mm. I can't be unfair to the car because I do drive an I-Pace, which is designed to be insulated because it's so quiet. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's a big battery underneath it that is also insulating it from the road. So the road noise doesn't come through that car very easily. Whereas yeah. I, I noticed the road noise in the Haval. Yeah. Um, is that a factor of quality? Maybe not, because I have noticed the same thing in other cars that uh, that I've driven, like uh, you know, even the VW Polo. You can you can hear road noise. Mm. It's a bit more insulated, though. Mm. Um, you know, so so I think everybody's perception of quality is different. For sure, it's 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 probably less about things like the road noise and and um, and more about what it looks like mm. when it's standing still. Yeah. You know, so when it's in the driveway or when it's parked in the parking lot or when mm. you show your car off to your friends. And or you're oh, looking out the window and you see it drive past, yeah. Yes, exactly. It's more about that. Yeah. Um, you know. Than the person who's actually behind the wheel. But to be fair, as well, at the same time, you pay X and you're getting X. It's not like they... I think you're getting... Like you're getting more. You're X, getting more value yeah. for money for a Jolian than you are for a lot of others. For sure. For sure. I'm still like personally, I do think that the quality, the actual quality of the driving experience, um, for me personally, definitely outweighs um, how it looks. Um, but at the same time, I can completely understand why these cars are doing so well. It makes sense. I love the way that car looks. The Jolian, the H6, the new Cherry Tigo. Looks very futuristic. Stunning. Yeah. Uh, the new Kia. The new Kia, Ooh, stunning, stunning, stunning vehicles. Car. Yeah. And they're not bad. Like I, I still think they, as a vehicle, you, you're getting a very, very well-built. Or even the Suzuki Swift. 
Yeah. Suzuki Swift, I mean, Suzuki is like wiping the floor uh, <laughs> with small cars yeah. um, at the moment. But uh, uh, the Suzuki Swift, what a solid ride. Mm. You know, I don't know if you've driven in a Suzuki Swift, but it uh, it really is a solid ride. Yeah. So something else that I think, you know, might swing the scales here. So there's been a, a recent shift with regards to the new vehicle sales. The top 10 most sold for vehicles in, I think it was April, mm -hmm. were all entry level models. Um, so this includes the, the Polo Vivo, the Starlets, the Swift, and then the Renault Quid. So to your point, I think people are getting more price sensitive um, and seeing price over quality is, is, is becoming a lot more prevalent prevalent in South Africa, which I think is a good thing. I think it's important. Um, but yeah, I think I think South Africans are not at a, at a point where they're seeing quality as like the... Is that an economic issue? Or do you think it's a, you know, I would like the perceived quality or the quality, but um, mm. it's just not affordable right now. Yeah, but that means the South African consumer has changed their mind then. Before it was, it doesn't matter. I'm going to drive the 800 Rand, the, the 800,000 Rand car and live in the 500,000 Rand apartment. <laughs> That's an extreme, yeah. Yeah. Um, whereas now it's, you know, the the consumer is, is is changing. And I think the the days of these German super brands being at the top might be threatened in the next few coming years, potentially. Yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would agree and disagree. And I mean, VW has done such a great job yeah. in, in turning their focus onto EVs. Mm. I mean, they've sold them, I think they've sold the most EVs in Europe. Okay. Um, and uh, Tesla's number two. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, uh, not in America though. Um, but in America is the biggest market. Yeah. So, uh, so I think VW might still stay up there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm worried with BMW and uh, uh, and Mercedes as German brands. You know, are they doing enough to to stay at the luxury level? Because let's be honest, every <laughs> EV that I've driven has yeah. been a luxury EV. For sure, it's, they've all been equally luxurious and almost like. Uh, um, German brand is like historical luxury. Yeah. Um, every single one of them. But you said it yourself when you drove that iX though. Oh no, what a car. Was it not like Absolutely. this amazing experience? Absolutely, they've, they've really put together a good car there. A uh, great car. Um, you know, I would, I, I would, even, I would even argue that um, it is as good if not better than the Tesla Model X. Yeah. Except I think the Tesla Model X is more technology in it. Yeah, more like up to date sort of user experience. You know, when you're driving the Tesla Model X, the, the mapping mapping software you know picks up, and the cameras pick up other cars around you. Mm. And whereas I don't think the current current manufacturers have that down yet. Um, that that sort of software level is something that we're not considering. Okay, look, when we look at auto trader data, we see that there's just more com consumers, car shoppers generally. Um, demand has increased. So I don't know the, off, off the top of my head, but you know, I think that you know these historically German brands are still selling the same amounts of numbers. There may just be more people in the market now who are also able to kind of facilitate and, and you know kind of put money into these smaller, newer uh, Eastern brands. Is that not a consideration that we potentially not considering? Well, I mean, the market grows all the time, right? So the size of the pie uh, has to grow because as the population grows, um, the, the the size of the market grows, which means mm -hmm. that you've got to continually sell more cars globally, yeah. um, you know, from every brand. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but um, what you're saying is maybe they're staying flat and everyone yeah. else is growing. It's growing. With, exactly that. So, 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 so the, the the share of the market is shifting to the Eastern brands and to the EV manufacturers, which is Tesla. Exactly that. So, I don't think we should be worried or concerned that, like, the the pie is basically the the piece of the pie is moving. I think more so, it's the pie is getting bigger. Well, yeah, the pie is getting bigger, but the traditional brands are not taking the, the increase. Exactly. That, that's what you're saying. Exactly. Yes. I, I mean, I think I think there's. Um, there's, there's probably data we can look at to uh, to corroborate that, but I, I would imagine that's the case. 
Yeah. You know, the, the newer brands, the funkier brands, Teslas of the world, uh, the, the Havals of the world are taking the newbies. Exactly. They're not switching the loyal people. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if there's, because I, I would assume that some of these, uh, I guess these Eastern companies, they actually do have higher quality build vehicles. And we just might be seeing um, like the lower quality build. Does that make sense? What do you mean? Like specifically with them bringing the vehicles into the country, they just bringing the ones that they know are gonna sell best. But as a brand, they do have a better quality vehicle. Well, I mean, I think I think the the Eastern or you know Chinese brands have learned, so they've learned how to build a car. Yeah. And um and 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 having learned how to build a car, they've also learned what different markets want. So they'll send a particular car to a market where they know it will work. Yeah. And uh, I, I just my prediction for for a long time now is, I think the top selling EV in South Africa, yeah, is going to be a Chinese EV. Yeah. I I think that that's going to be the case. I've heard whispers that Toyota is coming out with an EV next yes, year. Yes, they are. At what price point? Mm. Mm. You know, if you if you think about you know where Toyota's priced at the moment versus um, versus German brands versus every other brand that's not Chinese. Mm. If you take Haval Jolian, for instance, and the price point in what you can get in other cars, yeah, I think that if we don't sort out this tax issue, we don't incentivize EVs as a country. Yeah. China's just going to fit straight into that problem. And kind of solve solve all the problems essentially that- Maybe even begin manufacturing here. Yeah. Uh, you, we haven't thought about that. Mm. What if a Chinese manufacturer starts to manufacture here? Bypassing yeah. all the import problems. Yeah, there'll be a, a serious shift in the markets. Immediately we'll see a change. Um, yes, because because they'll be able to push a push a, an EV into the market that's at a good price point because they don't have to you know pay the the taxes and uh, um, and potentially become the future of EVs in uh, in the country. I don't know. So if price and quality is something that's important to you, I think the most important thing, really, or the only advice I would give to anyone who's looking for a car, is to do a test drive, a thorough test drive. Got it, yeah. Because I have seen on social media a lot of people buying some of these vehicles and being kind of disappointed afterwards with regards to what was the perceived quality because it looked good. So just do the test drive, um, a thorough test drive. Rigorously look at the car. You yeah. Know, test drive it, drive it, drive it, read a lot of stuff that's yes. going on. See what people know, are saying people about people it. People are saying. There's lots of information on the internet. 100%. Well, I think that's pretty much all the time we have. Um, but yeah, it's been a really awesome show, George. Go Ferrari. Go Lewis. Always. <laughs> <laughs>